so I just returned the S5 Mark II back to Lumix after the review, but in return, I got to try out another new camera, Lumix G9 Mark II. <laughs> I am super hyped about this because I'm mainly a micro faulted user and this could potentially be the best micro faulted camera right now. First impression, this looks absolutely identical to S5 Mark II. The body, the button placements, the size, everything is the same except there is no longer a full frame mount but a micro faulted. Features wise is largely the same, it has open gate, 10-bit 422, high dynamic range, real-time LUT, improved autofocus. If I'm not wrong, this is the first micro faulted camera to have face detect autofocus, as well as superior optical stabilization, shutter angle, and so on and so forth. I won't be going in depth with it because this is very much the same as S5 Mark II, which I covered in my previous video. So overall, this look to be very promising so let's go and head out and really try out this camera let's go so right now i'm shooting on real time LUT, no additional edits no filters directly straight out of the camera this is 4k 10 bit 422 not exactly the highest format but good enough for youtube what do you guys think and by the way, I'm not exactly using the Lumix Rec 709 because I think the colors is not as great. I'm actually using the Gamut Rec 709. Right now, I'm shooting the Lumix Rec 709. And right now, I'm shooting the Gamut Rec 709. So right now I'm shooting open gate which you can then reframe to vertical and horizontal content. This is 5.8K 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So slightly lower quality and narrower compared to S5 Mark II. So S5 Mark II open gate is 6K 3 by 2 aspect ratio. So you probably have to shoot a bit more wider with this camera if you want to shoot multi-platform content. Okay, so I'm testing the stabilization right now. Right now, I'm mean, just walking and you're gonna try jogging right now. And then run. And what do you think? Okay, uh, I need to change it to 12mm to compare to other Lumix camera. Back to ultra wide, apparently, they say if you shoot with the e stabilization, it will remove the wobbles when you shoot with ultra wide. I'm gonna test that right now. So, I'm gonna do a run straight away to see if there's any wobbles. And this is just the standard e stabilization. And this is with high, this is way more cropping as compared, but probably the stabilization will be better. Whew. And that's it for the testing and let's head back and check out the footage. Two more things I'm going to test that is slow motion and autofocus. So slow motion it can go up to 4K 120p. No crop will set itself apart from S5 Mark II. And 1080p, if I'm not wrong, this can shoot up to 200 fps. So I'm not sure whether it has autofocus limitation when you shoot slow-mo or whether you will default to contrast-based detect autofocus, we are going to test it out right now. Review the footage and I could say the stabilization is really really good. I think it's better than S5 
Mark II. And with the e-stabilization, it actually removed the wobbles on the side, which makes the footage even better. I don't think I could have removed the wobbles in my post-production in Final Cut Pro. So I actually do recommend using the e-stabilization if you're using ultra wide angle lenses. Autofocus is as good as S5 Mark II, but there's still some slow motion autofocus limitation. At 50 or 60p, I think it's fine. By 100p, it will slow down of default to contrast based detect autofocus. At 200p, I don't think it can focus at all. But this is still better than S5 Mark II and there's no crop on all the slow motions, which I think is the part that actually outshines over S5. Mark II. And other things to take note, the open gate is actually narrower and slightly lower resolution and the dynamic range is also one stop lower than S5 Mark II. And if I'm not wrong, this camera actually does not have fans, so it does have overheating at 4K 120p but it's only if you shoot it to up to 25 to 30 minutes which I don't think anybody will shoot for that long so I think it's actually a non-issue for me and all the other recording options no overheating issue. We also tested the low light capabilities it's better than my outdated G85 but still not as good as the full frame S5 Mark II. The bokeh is probably not as good as well but in return you gain the portability of a lighter setup. So overall I would say this is an awesome camera and I fully recommend it to anybody who are looking for micro photos. This is definitely the best one to go for and sad to say I will have to return this back to Lumix. Hopefully I could try a bit more before I return it and that's all about what I want to say about this camera. Really impressed by it and that's all and I will see you guys in the next vlog.